Hey guys, welcome back to Many Tribes, One Kingdom. It's your good friend Dustin here with my wonderful and uh, currently being attacked by cats co-host. Hey, it's John. And uh, uh, yeah, Dustin's right. I'm currently being attacked by cats, uh, hanging out outside of Destiny's. So that's what all the noise in the background is. I do apologize uh, beforehand, but happy to be here. Today, we are going to be following in the life of another disciple. Bartholomew. So stay tuned. All right. So we are going to, like I said before, we are going to be talking about the life of a disciple or an apostle, Bartholomew. Now we do want to give um, a little disclaimer, a lot of the information is based on traditions held by the church and other extra biblical, um, extra biblical sources, because it really there's not much mentioned about Bartholomew in the Bible outside of him being listed among the disciples and his uh, calling. Yes. So, so can... oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, the other thing is that you may note is that Bartholomew is one of his names. As you know, many disciples had one or two names. And so while Matthew, Mark, and Luke refer to him as Bartholomew, John refers to him as Nathaniel. And there are some scholars who do not believe he's yeah, that Nathaniel and Bartholomew are the same person. However, there's not much evidence to support that. We hold to the belief that Bartholomew and Nathan, Nathaniel are the same person. Based on the meanings of their names, Bartholomew meaning son of Ptolemy, and Nathaniel, I can't remember exactly. I don't remember exactly, but Nathaniel would be his actual first name. Bartholomew would almost be like his family name. Right. So, what do we know about Bartholomew slash Nathaniel? I'm going to use the names interchangeably, so but I'll mostly probably call him Bartholomew. Uh, we know he was from Cana, mm -hmm. which I don't have a map, so I can't show you that right now. And even if I did, I've got a cat biting my hand. <laughs> Cana of Galilee, I should be, we should be more specific. Yes, Cana, Cana of Galilee, which was so, pretty close to um, Nazareth, actually. Yeah, I want to say that's northern Israel. Uh, yes. Galilee was, I believe it was the trot where Naphtali and Zebulun had their territory in the north. Mm. And uh, so interestingly enough, Jesus grew up in Nazareth. So him and Nathaniel would have actually grown up relatively close together. That doesn't mean they knew each other. Let's make sure we're clear. No, it doesn't. It doesn't mean they knew each other. It's just like me and John would have known each other because he lived in Martinsburg and we lived in Baltimore. Yeah. It, yeah, it was relatively close, but there was still a great distance between them. Yes, and they were also kind of rivals with one another, Cana and uh, Nazareth, and we see that during Nathaniel's calling. But let's we'll get to that in just a moment. So we know very little about him. We know his father's name was Ptolemy. Mm -hmm. We know that he was probably close friends with Philip. Well, he was close friends with Philip. And we know that he might have been a fisherman, but there's also a good chance he wasn't. And he also seems to have diligently studied scripture. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, even the uh, and, manner of his sorry. death is up. You know, you're good. Even the manner of his death is up in the air. Many traditions have different ways that he has died in places where he died. Yeah, we'll get to that after we talk about his life real fast. Uh, so Nathaniel is, we really only see his real character come out in John chapter one, verses 43 through the end of the chapter. And this is where Philip goes to get Nathaniel and tell him, hey, we found the Messiah. He's from Nazareth. And Nathaniel says, well, you know, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Kind of showing that little, uh, I guess that little rivalry between the two cities, most likely. Oh, yeah. But also the fact that Nathaniel seems to be a diligent studier of scripture, because when Jesus mentioned that he saw him under the fig tree, 
one scholar I found, uh, J. Ellsworth Callis, Callis, I could be mispronouncing that. Uh, he mentioned, and I believe William Barclay uh, co corroborates this information, is that when Jesus mentions Nathaniel being under the fig tree when he saw him, the fig tree that people grew in their yards was often used as a place of prayer and meditation for scripture. So Jesus seeing Nathaniel under the fig tree is him seeing him while he's praying, while he's studying scripture, looking for Messiah. I mean, and other than, you know, after Jesus' death, he goes out with, we believe he goes out with Philip to continue the ministry. Yes. To proclaim his word throughout the nations. But... He does take part in the breakfast by the Sea of Galilee with Jesus and Peter at the end of John. But that's really the last time we see him in scripture other than him being mentioned in the book of Acts as one of Jesus's followers. Yeah, it seems like to be, be, be the most consistent thing is calling and then, you know, him being listed among the disciples who will go out and preach the gospel. Yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot about him. I mean, he's recognized for being a forthright man you know jesus says he is some an israelite in whom there is no deceit so he's a very open and honest man evidenced mm -hmm. by when he says can anything good come out of nazareth you know he he kind of seems to be nathaniel seems to me to be the kind of guy who doesn't have a filter when he talks yeah <laughs> like he's gonna he's gonna tell you how it is whether you want to hear it or not i think that's a perfect man of a god, man of god i mean I did find out what his name actually means. Nathaniel means gift of God. Oh wow, that's uh that's perfect. It is perfect, but considering what he just said about Nazareth, I'm like, um Yeah. You kind of need to work on that, Nathaniel. I think that's one of the things that probably Jesus addressed multiple times in his ministry. That doesn't matter where someone comes from, it's a matter of who they are and who they, you know, who they worship, their essence, not their but not the yeah. place of their birth. I mean, and Jesus talks about that so many times throughout the gospel. It doesn't matter where someone comes from. You had to address that with the Pharisees. They had to address that with everybody. It doesn't matter your tribe. It doesn't matter your family. It doesn't matter anything like that. When you serve Christ, it, that all goes away. Yeah, you know, Jesus. Sorry, my cat's laying at my feet. I was reaching out to see him. Uh, <laughs> it's all about Jesus. And Nathaniel definitely seems to take to that very quickly. Bartholomew, when you know, when Jesus says, I saw you, I know who you are, he instantly believes. So he's kind of like one of the quickest converts. Yeah, you know, whenever, when when I read that, I, I, it draws me back to the chosen in that scene where he's under the fig tree looking at the plans of the uh, temple. I'm just sitting there thinking to myself. And then it goes fast forwards to the scene where Jesus is talking to him saying that I saw mm -hmm. you, and just seeing how Nathaniel just breaks down. It, it it definitely paints a deeper picture of who Nathaniel's character, that he was deeply emotional, that there was something underneath that layer yeah. of um, outwardly perfection or trying to be outwardly perfect. Yeah, he's definitely the kind of guy I'd like to sit down and have a talk with, I think. I mean, yeah, I'd yeah. love that. I'm gonna love it when we get when we get to paradise, you know, sitting down and just talking with each of the disciples. Ah, I just got bit by a cat. I I could just imagine Nathaniel saying it. Number one billion seven hundred thirty-three thousand. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> you know, just don't call in the numbers like you're in a grocery store waiting to get your yeah. uh, you're in a deli. Dairy, your deli, yeah. I yeah. can imagine that. You get and he's just like, you get one question, and that's it. One question. Yeah. So the other thing, again, we don't see much of after this. It's believed by church tradition. And this is where this is where our reliable information does end. So going off of tradition, mm -hmm. it's believed that he did continue to work with Philip because he and Philip were friends. And the manner of his death, I could be wrong, but I think I think Nathaniel has more options for how he died than any other disciple believe it just based on the three i read the, the three the, i believe the three most popular ones was that he was beheaded um flayed which means being skinned alive yeah youtube please do not remove this video for the uh <laughs> the topical discussion <laughs> and the last one was him being crucified upside down but there yeah. are probably more than that 
listed. Even the place where he died is up for debate because some people say he was crucified in Phrygia. Uh, others say he was flayed alive in Armenia. I don't know for sure. I kind of would lean more towards the Armenia one because that's the one I've kind of heard more of. So it doesn't mean it's accurate. Again, we're completely going on speculation here. But I personally would lean towards the he was flayed alive in Armenia. Mm. Yeah, that, it it does seem. How did how did Philip die? If I may ask. Uh, from what I found, Philip was crucified in Phrygia, but Nathaniel escaped. Right, but I I would I would think that if he, he had the option of dying, I think he would probably die the same way as his a uh, fellow apostle yeah. Philip. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, let us know down in the comments. Like, how do you think Nathaniel slash Bartholomew died? And if you want to provide sources for where you were, provide evidence behind it, please put your sources down so we were able to follow up. Because we would love to, you know, we, we'll probably do another video just talking about that alone. Yeah, I mean, I plan to eventually, once we finish all the lives of the apostles, I plan to actually make a video discussing each of their deaths in detail. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, showing how far they were willing to go for Christ. But with that, we really don't have anything else on him. That's it. Oh, yeah. Uh, Bartholomew is one one person who I would love to know more about. He's probably got the longest line in heaven. Probably all of them asking how he died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, something like that. Something like that. Um, oh, but all jokes aside, I, I do believe Bartholomew, just as the other ones, had his own faults had his own problems, but that. Oh, when cool. met, but when he met Christ, he he changed for the better. But the one thing I can see him in, in being different that just the way in he how he talks, being so not stern. I don't want to say stern, but how he's so direct. That's the word. How he is so yeah. direct. I think that's a really good quality that many people should mirror. Whenever you're preaching the gospel, just be very direct. Don't you know hide behind the shadows. Don't don't try to don't hide sugar. Don't don't be scared about what the gospel says. Because guess what, the gospel is going to say what it said. It's just pure fact. It's not. Yep. It's not. Doesn't care about the emotion of the person. It cares about the whole being. At no point did holy through any through the Holy Spirit say, uh, being nice. It says to be kind. The list it be says kind, to be kind, but and, also be. Right, be gentle, but it doesn't mean not to be direct. Tell the truth, be wholesome. Again, if you ever want to take any characteristics of Nathaniel or Bartholomew, whichever name you want to call him, be that, be direct. Yes. All right, I think that's everything. Good thing, too. I got cats attacking my feet now. <laughs> it has definitely been a joy, John, talking with you and <laughs> yep. many, many different screams. Here, let's uh, let's uh, let's show them the newest triber. Come here, Ezra. Ta-da! Uh, bring your camera over to down a little bit, down a little bit. You still holding it, right? Okay, now bring it over to your left. Oh, down, down, down a little bit, just down a little. Bit. Uh, he doesn't want to be on camera. Angle it down a little bit. He he ran off. Oh, we did get a quick glimpse, and Ezra is a very beautiful cat. John's favorite. Of course, he's my favorite. He's mine. <laughs> anyway, we want to anyway, thank guys. you for watching. And uh, if you haven't seen our other videos on disciples yet, we've done Peter, John, James, Matthew, and Thomas. And I think we should do Philip next. Absolutely. I think it'll be good following after we just did Bartholomew. Yeah. So we'll do Philip next. So make sure you stay subscribed and check out the playlist. And if you have any thoughts on Nathaniel slash Bartholomew, if you have any thoughts about whether they were the same guy or not, what, how he died, anything else you want to offer, we'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for watching this video through all of its kookiness and craziness. We thank you for paying attention as we brought some very serious information for you guys. Have a great day and God bless you.